Okay, I think we're finally working here. Uh, sorry for the delay, and I hope um, Patreon folks, you can find this um, new link in your messages, which I just posted. Um, though if you can't find it, then me telling you about it. Uh, I was ha having trouble with my video for the first one. Um, anyways, here we are now. We'll play some tunes and we'll see um, who turns up and, and what happens. I think I am going to reframe this a little bit so my face is somewhere in there. Actually, there we go. Now, I can, now you can see my face. That's kind of polite. Um, all right, I think I'll start with some tunes. <laughs> current favorite tunes is um, a Ralph Page tune um, called McQuillan's Squeeze Box. And I'm now thinking, when did I do the January office hours? And had I learned this tune yet? And I was really excited about it then. And did I already play it? But uh, I don't know the answer to that question. So I will play it now. <laughs> And if you get it twice, well, it's a really good tune. So there you go. Uh, it's in the key of C. It's a nice, nice marchy feeling tune. And um, the McQuillan in question and, um, is Bob McQuillan, um, who passed away actually, um, I think three years ago, was it just yesterday, yesterday Monday? Uh, I have it in my calendar actually as a, as a reminder. Um, anyways, uh, just about exactly, I think it was three years ago now, wow. Um, a phenomenal um, and and legendary um, piano player in the country style um, and tradition, New England tradition um, from New Hampshire, lived um, 
at least in the last part of his life, I think lived many different places, but in the last part of his life lived in Peterborough, New Hampshire. And he used to come to Maine Fiddle Camp um, and among, among many other places and uh, enjoyed spending some time with him there over the years. Um, but that tune was written for him by um, Ralph Page, who is a caller and band leader um, also from, or working in New Hampshire. And one of my current favorite tunes. Um, so he also played the piano accordion in addition to the piano, hence the squeeze box. Um, another tune that has been on my mind a lot um, in the last month in a completely different direction um, is this lovely Irish hornpipe um, called Kitty's Wedding. And I'll play it for you. And maybe, yeah, I'll go into another hornpipe that I really love um, that I learned um, when I was in Ireland a couple of years ago from a session player in Cork. Really lovely session um, at the Spalpeen Fanuc, um, which I had frequented when I was a student studying abroad there uh, in college and got to go back and visit and um, hit a lovely session. It was, it was on Tuesday night um, there and learned um, this lovely second hornpipe. Um, I'm forgetting the composer right now, but it's called um, The Dance of the Honeybees. Um, Charlie Lennon. I can't remember. I'll uh, look it up and I'll, I'll put it in the notes. Um, I think they played uh, these tunes the other way around at the session, um, but I started putting them this way and uh, really like them. And then of course came home and found that my friends at the local session here in Belfast, in fact, played both tunes as well. And I just somehow hadn't gotten them from them, but they really stood out to me um, when I was at the session in Cork. So.
you go. Two lovely Irish uh, hornpipes. And I'm just going to switch and make sure I'm not getting desperate emails from somebody saying, where are you? Um, not seeing any desperate emails. I hope people are busy and didn't just give up on me because I wasn't appearing uh, at seven o'clock as intended. It, uh, I was getting, getting a blank screen and getting a chat feature that wasn't saying live chat was disabled, which when I looked, it said it was enabled. So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we're here now and you can watch it later if you're missing it live. Um, I think I want to play some more Irish tunes, but I also, um, really wanted to share, um, a little double stop exercise with everybody that I talked about with one of my students this week. And thought, oh wow, this would be really helpful to um, share with everybody. And I think, um, you know, we've worked some with um, just getting going on two strings, trying to get them all the time. Um, but I had a couple of pointers in this lesson that I thought um, I should share. So once you get um, two strings going at once here together, and each pair is, you know, a very specific different angle. Um, one thing that um, was really helpful for this one student I was working with um, was to think about lightening up on the bow, that it can be easy both to overdrive the string, but it can, um, and then get that, you know, kind of squawky sound. Um, but it can also be really easy to um, press harder to compensate for not really knowing the exact angle with your hand. So um, by pressing as lightly as you can and still getting good sound um, forces you to really nail the bow angle um, correctly and um, also forces you to um, move your bow more slowly if you're going to get a good sound. And so then you'll have more time sort of experiencing that angle. So get the string pair and then lighten up. And actually, that could be a good time. I didn't mention this to my student. Um, maybe I should mention it to her next week. Um, it could be a good time as well to um, practice. You know, can you get a little bit more of the D string, a little bit more of the A string, or whichever strings you're using? Um, because often when you're playing, you want the melody to come out a little bit louder than the drone. So. And in some ways, it does just because the melody changes and the drone stays the same. But I would tend to play mostly on the D string, a little bit on the A for the beginning of Kitty's Wedding. Um, anyways, the other little exercise that I was talking about with my student is um, not only to practice going from string pair to string pair, um, from uh, one set of you know, double stopped strings to another because you sometimes have to do that. And going, you know, if I started with the down bow and the low strings there, start with an up bow. Um, but what's even more common, I realize, and that, you know, I haven't really mentioned this, is to go from single notes, one of the strings, to double stops. Um, so to practice going from, say, D and A to just A, um, or DNA to just D and do that starting on both bow directions as well, because it's a very different feeling. So, um, I'm going to go from both to ju just the A string. And you're going to want to make sure probably getting the plain A is going to be easier. Though you might over sort of overcompensate because you're used to going from D to A and it's a bigger angle change. So it could be that when you do that, you'll, you know, be hitting the E string accidentally. Um, but I'm guessing going to the A string will be easier. And what will be harder is getting back to the double stop really cleanly. So feel free to pause and, you know, look at your bow, look and see, you know, are you contacting both strings before you play? And 
and then I've been starting with a down bow. I'm going to start with an up bow on those strings. <laughs> Then I would start with the down bow and go to the D string. And then start with an up bow and go to the D string. Anyways, because that's, you know, often that's the scenario. I, what tune were we working on? Um, I think we were playing... Um, Um, uh, the Claire Jig, but that's not the name of me. I've been using the name Jimmy Wards, uh, which is like the New England name for it. Um, or one of the New England names. It's the name, one of the names I learned it under. And then somebody, uh, it reminded me recently that it's also called the Claire Jig. Um, so we were working on, you know, trying to bring double stops in partway through that tune. Uh, I'll just play the tune once. <laughs> in and out of double stopping and I'm probably using um, more double stops than most Irish players would I tend to um, more because I'm a contra dance fiddle player more than I'm anything else and um, sometimes those double stops are really useful to get the sound out there onto the dance floor um, so and to accentuate bowing rhythm and I just like them so I use them a lot uh, apologies to uh, the often um, less double stopped Irish style. Um, so um, I'm going, you know, in and out. And I think the first time I started without anything. And then I'm bringing that in there. So you, wherever, whatever tune you're using, figure out the spot um, where you want to be adding the double stops and figure out, okay, what's my bowing doing at that spot? and then practice that transition if you're having trouble. So if I was wanting to bring that G drone in there and I was uh, having trouble getting it, I would play it again. And I'm at a down bow. So I've just played a, a bow D and I'm gonna play double Gs. do the bowing the other way too just to make sure because sometimes you know my bowing's not 100% consistent I might need to do it the other direction so instead of playing up bow D I'll play down bow D and up bow G's that's actually really difficult for me to do conceptually because I think I would always have a down bow in this place anyways it's good for you oh I except I went I defaulted so down bow start never say always um, you know, in another spot later on, I might need to do a different combination, but find, um, find the specific places where you're trying to bring the double stops in and practice. Okay. So what single string am I on before that note? Um, what two strings do I go on to get that transition working 
um, just with those two um, two notes, and then um, bring in any fingering that needs to happen as well, and then try to you know work up to a larger section. And I think um, that will help um, because yeah, getting into and out of the double stops can be um, can be the biggest challenge. Um, often people can do them all all by themselves out of context, but getting them in context is very difficult. So hopefully that helps. Let me know how it goes. Um, so I think I have, uh, yeah, some other Irish tunes on my agenda. I made a list recently of tunes that I'm excited about teaching. Um, it's a long list and I'll play some of them. I've definitely played for you in the past and I'm going to try to pick ones that I don't think I have, but, um, Oh, also, I'll just share um, for anybody who doesn't know, up on the website, freefootolessons.com, there is now an index um, to most, not all, of these office hours with um, a sort of list of topics of what tunes, I think techniques too, I think I did techniques, um, what tunes have been covered and... Um, now I can't remember. I may have even done, I don't think I did a direct link to each video at that time. That um, we've just been a lot of work actually <laughs> to put all those links in. Um, but I, I made the catalog page of the website and it, it does cover all of the videos that um, the office hours videos I've done since I started putting the um, time links in the descriptions of the videos. So I have to go back at some point and uh, figure out what I played in the previous videos um, and time link them in the descriptions and also connect them to that um, to that list on the website. But I'm hoping that that will be a, a helpful tool as you're trying to navigate different tunes you want to learn. Um, nice to have an, a collection of, of what's in these videos. So, um, oh, let's play that. I wasn't thinking about that. Um, but here's another um new england uh tune from the irish tradition uh definitely played uh, uh it won't. um oh and my video was looking blotchy on me hopefully i'm not losing my quality um uh and it's also played pretty commonly as a uh dance tune here it's called a handsome young maidens uh it's a jig in a and of course, now can I remember how it goes? Is that it? Uh, I think, I think it is. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. I was having doubts that this was the right tune. So here we go. The handsome, the handsome young maidens.
tune on my list here is the another jig, The Joy of My Life, which is a beautiful tune. And I may have played this one before. I think I might have, but play it again. I mean, it hasn't been in a while. It wasn't like last month. <laughs> I hope. I switched there at the end um, to a reel uh, called The Crooked Road, um, which I, I think of as one of my most international tunes. I learned it um, in France now many years ago, like a lot of years ago, 17 years ago, maybe? No, 16 years ago. Phew. Uh, I learned it in France. Um, it's an Irish tune, and I learned it from a Swedish woman who was traveling with a bunch of Scottish fiddle players. Uh, and I was hanging out with these Scottish fiddle players, and this woman from Sweden uh, was along with them. Uh, I want to say her name was Sophie. Um, and she taught me that tune. And I loved it. And uh, it's what's called a single reel, uh, meaning that you only repeat the parts once. So it, that is not a great tune for dancing. Um, though, apparently... I remember somebody saying that um, um, oh, Jerry Holland, um, who wrote Brenda Stubbert's reel, um, along with lots of other tunes, but I think that's one I've played on here before. 
um, that Jerry Holland used to come down and play the contra dance in North Whitefield, which I think I actually, I think I remember that I, that I had been there for that at one point, but somebody mentioned that, uh, you know, we talk about how single reels aren't great for dancing, but, um, but it didn't bother him any, and he'd just show up and play all kinds of single reels, uh, which they have in the Cape Breton tradition as well, and play them all night for the dance, and uh, nobody would mind. He wouldn't mind. Nobody, none of the dancers would mind. Um, it just means that, you know, you get through half the dance, and then you're playing the tune again. Um, and actually, it could be that I would mind <laughs> that I would get confused at this point, because I find that my dancing is very much tied to the tune, and so if the if I know the tune and we're in the B part of the tune and the A part of the dance, I can sometimes get very discombobulated. <laughs> um, but that's just me. I'm kind of weird like that. Um, so I think we'll probably leave it there for tonight. Nothing else on my list is really leaping out at me. Um, and stay tuned. Um, we'll be back in March with another office hours. All right. I hope everybody has a good night.